Hey everybody, welcome back today to Retro Tech. I'm Steve, and we've got Brutus here joining us in the lovely CRT bunker. And I'm glad to bring you a follow-up to our capacitor kit video that I did prior to this one where I showed how you can go online and build your own capacitor kit and then order that kit. And then today I've got the kit in from Mauser and I wanted to just show you what to expect when you actually get this kit in the mail. We'll look at the new capacitors and we'll compare them with some of the old ones that we removed from the original device, which is a Sony PVM14N6U. Uh, we'll compare the new capacitors with these older capacitors. These are about 20 years old, so there will be different sizes. And we'll take a comparison of those and then we'll install this new capacitor kit and we'll take a look at how it performs uh, after we reassemble this Sony PVM. So let's just go ahead. We're gonna check out our overhead view again and look at our kit and we can compare this with, again, the older capacitors that we've removed from the circuit board. This is our kit. It just comes in this style of a box normally. Uh, you may get a smaller box. It does come with an order sheet, again, that will tell us everything that's included in this order. These are bagged box out of the way. We have each part and these are individually packaged depending on what we ordered. Some of them obviously have two in them. What I'd like to do is open it up and spread all these out so that um, I can individually check them out and make sure they're everything that I ordered. And here's a good example. We actually ordered a uh, beefier capacitor here for this 10 microfarad 160 volt. We're replacing this one that is, but this one's only 85 degrees Celsius. We got 105 degrees, but you can see where from the board, our uh, separation right here, it's still the same on these capacitors. So, there's a lot of room on the board, so the actual physical size difference of the diameter will not impede us from installing the new capacitor. And like I say, as it just sits here, the uh, spacing on the leads is the same. So that's just an example of one of our new ones compared to our old one. All right, so here we have another one. On this side, you'll see the capacitor that's been removed, and this is our replacement. This is a Panasonic, uh, but the lead spacing is again, like I said, this is a standard lead spacing, so that's good. And you'll notice the size on these is near, is pretty much identical. Now here's an example where our original one is a good bit bigger than our replacement. And still, this is a lesser capacitor with the rating there. Um, so as far as those are concerned, uh, this is a, a really long-lasting capacitor again, so it should be fine. All right, so that's probably the biggest differences. The rest of these are pretty much the same size. Now I'm going to take these and install it in our boards here. This is our circuit board for our Sony PVM that has had all the capacitors removed already that are in this kit. Uh, you can see a lot of these empty spots in this deflection area. And then uh, over around these heat sinks also in this deflection area, mostly deflection caps that are specifically rated, related to the deflection only. And then I do have some power supply filter caps and things like that to make sure that those are still good and they are in hot areas. They've all been uh, removed in, in some of these areas. So I'll come back and we'll take a look at the circuit board with those caps installed and then we'll reassemble this monitor and see how it looks. Now here is our board with our new cap kit installed. See a lot of them in there. Everything fit fine, no troubles. This is the main board here. That's all the high voltage areas over here. And then this one actually has the power supply built into the main board, so there's not separate boards. But again, the full kit has been installed. Again, no issues really, even though some of them were a little bit slightly different in size. Same thing if we look at the neck board real quickly. There are a couple capacitors on here. They were slightly larger because they are higher heat, heat rated and uh, should last longer than the ones that were in here. But that's our kit installed. Now let's go ahead and reassemble this PVM 
and do some tests with it. All right, everybody, we're here and we're going to do a test. And uh, this is the first time we're going to run this. And now let's just power it on and see what happens after all the cap work. Sounds good. Not going to lie, it's always pretty nerve wracking every time you turn these things on for the very first time after doing heavy work to them. And this is using S video and looks really, really nice for S video. Everything appears to be working fine. We'll let it run here for a little bit. And then it obviously needs some adjustment. But after that, we'll come back and uh, show you what it looks like when it's finished up. All right, so the Sony PVM14N6U is complete. I have it reassembled, it's been tested and adjusted, and it looks great. This is probably one of the sharpest N-series PVMs that I've ever seen, so that's a really good thing for the person who owns this. Now, uh, what I will note about the capacitor kit, because I want to give you a couple more tips. Uh, again, we saw when we were going through that order sheet in the original video how difficult it was to get the exact right size on either lead spacing or the diameter of a specific capacitor if you're concerned with matching your exact sizes or close enough on those capacitors, which you should be. Um, a, a tip I can give you is try to order, if you only have, if you do have a choice where you have maybe two caps that are similar in size and you don't know which one will work better, you could always order both. It's probably only gonna cost you on average 75 cents to get the same capacitor, you know, in a different one that is a different size, if one's available. So that's just a tip about when you're ordering to maybe consider ordering uh, multiple different capacitors that are the same value and capacitance and voltage, but have size differences to help alleviate some of your size problems. And um, the capacitors here, they are all just, I mean, to be honest with you, it's just like a fish oil inside of these uh, wrapped in paper. And uh, that's what the electrolytic fluid is. It's completely harmless uh, for the most part to the environment. So you're safe to throw these out. It's not like even, uh, it, it's less harmful than like even a battery would be, especially these small ones. Let's talk a bit about the adjustments on the PVM. We did have to make a lot of geometry adjustments and I have made a complete tutorial on how to adjust this specific end series. I will link to that. There's also occasionally problems with the buttons on some of these, especially the 20 inch versions of this. I have a button repair video, so I'll also link to that in case you have any issues with trying to make adjustments and then uh, your button's not really responding the way they should. I'll link to that video as well. Uh, but overall, again, the picture came out wonderfully. Please let me know what you think of the video with a comment below, and if you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a like. Brutus and I will see you all next time with some more retro content.